Welcome back, everybody. This is Excel Video 451, and I'm Nate Moore. Talked to a friend yesterday who was trying to do a big, complex anesthesia concurrency calculation to send back to a consultant. They had multiple ORs, and they had multiple months. They were trying to look at concurrency, and we wrote a big, complex formula and gave them some statistics over time and max and min and that kind of thing that saved them hours and hours worth of calculations. If I can help your practice with a big, complex calculation, I'd love to. I want to talk about error bars today and we'll start with what error bars are typically traditionally used for and then I'll show you how I use error bars. So what you can do again from chart elements and the plus here you can turn on error bars and if you click here there are some options in terms of standard error percentage and standard deviation and if you search Excel's help they'll tell you here's the formulas they use for these kind of things and if you want to use it for statistics and you want to do those kind of things that's great. If you go to more options and click here you can decide what the error bar looks like whether there's a plus and a minus or just one or the other you can see an in style I prefer I gotta click back over here if you do no cap it just looks like a line and for me this error bar the cap makes more sense to me so you can do the little line there or not. That's what the cap looks like. Here's what matters. For the traditional statistical use of these error bars, you can say here's how many standard deviations my sample is away from each other or standard error percentage. Or you can do a fixed value. You can do all kinds of things like that. What I use error bars for is custom. And what I'll do is I'll try to show more data on the chart without taking up a bunch of ink, if you will, or pixels or space on the chart. Here's what I mean. I know the average patients per day here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take this and unhide some additional information that I have. I know the min and the max. So buried in this average are some busy days and some not so busy days. And what I want to do is I want to show all of this information without taking up a ton of space on my chart. And an error bar is a great way to do it. What you can do is tell Excel, hey, the plus and the minus on each error bar is a calculation here as opposed to some kind of percentage or standard deviation or something like that. And so what I've done is minus is just the difference between the average and the min and plus is the difference between the max and the average. So that what I can do is I can come back over here and let's click on my error bars. And from the very bottom I'm going to specify value next to custom. And Excel is going to say, okay, where's your high, where's your low, where do you want these error bars? So my positive error value, I'm going to click that red arrow and say that's plus. My negative is my minus. Now what I've done when I click OK is I've said, okay, at 10th Street, our average is 467, just like it is here. But I can show you with this error bar that that range goes from 313 here to 618, see that maximum there, by putting the plus and minus in there, I can show three pieces of information with one bar and these two lines and not clutter up my chart. I could do more clinics here by simply doing one bar per clinic and using error bars to show additional information. Does that make sense? What I'm trying to do is save ink or save space on my chart and only show what needs to be shown. And these error bars help me see the range and you know, if I had a much broader range at, let's say, Northwest, let's make the maximum 900. What I could do is I could say, wow, you know, there's a big range in Northwest as compared to the others. And, you know, for the most part, it's down here by the lower average. But every now and then you better plan for some kind of awful excess capacity day where you better have that many registrars or doctors or nurses or whatever you need to make the clinic go. That's what I wanted to show you about error bars. You can do the traditional statistical stuff. But it's also a clever way to put more and more information on a chart without taking up a whole lot of space. Stay tuned. There's more charting tricks coming. Thanks for watching.